I'll just make a, a couple of uh, quick announcements before we start. I just uh, welcome everybody. Today's uh, event is sponsored by our annual sponsors, Ari, Astira, Too Close, Like Your Panavision, and Taylor and Taylor. All our annual events are are on account of th their support, so we're very grateful for that. Um, today's Alex La Verde is uh, the co-founder and CEO of BroadPro, and um, I will hand it over to him, and he can tell you about this service. Beautiful. Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Harry, and thanks, everybody, for uh, making some time to hear about what we're up to and what I've been doing. Um, quick agenda just of what I was going to try to cover today. Um, one was just my journey in selling to TV and film production, so give you a little background on why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then I'm going to kind of give a little overview of what Prod Pro does as a service. Um, give you guys. It will eventually be up to the bank's decision, but he thinks in the beginning the bank would be open to selling um, equipment to individuals or companies. Kelly needs to go on mute. There we go. Making making sales calls on the fly. You got to love it. Um, so preview of uh, and so yeah. The the third thing I wanted to do was give you guys a preview of our 2024. TV and film outlook report, which is something we put together once a year. Um, and so we're just about to put the finishing touches on that. I was telling Harry a little bit about it um, and going to give you guys a little exclusive preview of some of the charts in terms of what we're seeing there. And then lastly, just go through a quick uh, live demo of the Prod Pro platform. So you have some understanding of what this looks like as a lead service and then uh, leave some time at the end for any kind of Q&A that anybody might have. Um, so let me jump into it. Um, my background. So I started Prod Pro in 2022. Our mission is to create more visibility in the TV and film industry and really give vendors in particular the intel that they need to succeed. Prior to starting Prod Pro, I was the CEO and co-founder of Sync on Set, which is a company that was a vendor to productions. Um, ran that business for about 10 years and then sold it to entertainment partners. And what we did at Sync on Set was we were offering a software tool that replaced the three ring continuity binders on set. And it really became a standard. So if anybody here has any friends that work in costumes or props or set deck on set and deal with continuity, they probably are using our product um, every day to sort of accomplish that now. And, you know, we were very successful ultimately in sales at, at that company. Uh, growing it from, you know, really zero customers when we got started as a startup to over a thousand productions being served every year. Um, but initially, sales really didn't come that easy to us, which is why we're kind of doing what we're doing now. Um, I've got actually a live shot of me trying to make my first sale to my first TV and film project, which was The Wolf of Wall Street back in 2012, uh, doing production in New York. And the idea... Um, yeah, look, Hollywood is is a relationship business, right? And when I started Sync on Set, I had zero connections. And so the way that I was able to kind of hear about what was going on or just try to get a single sale was by doing things like this, right? Just getting out there, meeting people in production, um, taking a background job if need be, whatever it would take to get those relationships. And really, once you have those relationships, that's really what's key. Um, but is that really the only thing that matters, right? Is it all coming back to relationships? And if it does, right, why, why does tracking leads or doing outbound sales, why do you need any more visibility? And this is where, you know, relying on relationships alone, what I found in building my last company is that we eventually kind of hit a wall in a few different ways. You know, one, even if your whole business is built on inbound, right, you've got a service, you've been in the market a long time, and you just wait for the phone to ring. Even if that's your whole business, the frustrating thing you might find, and I found in my company, is that you have almost no visibility into what your sales pipeline is going to be, right? You know it's gonna come. You don't have to work that hard for it to come, but you don't even know what it's gonna be. And so that's that's probably the biggest challenge for people who just have inbound is that lack of real visibility into what the activity level is gonna look like. Um, but then secondly, if you're trying to grow beyond what's coming in the door, you're certainly missing out on opportunities if you're not doing any kind of research to get leads or and do any kind of outbound. Um, and, you know, of course, without knowing about what else is going on, you also might be servicing the wrong productions or chasing the wrong productions, right? Not every project is the same. Certain things might be a good fit for your service. Certain things might not be. So that lack of visibility really means that you're just kind of going after whatever is right in front of you. Um, and then lastly, and what really got to me building my last company was just wanting more predictable growth. 
And I ended up reading this great book I, I recommend called Predictable Revenue. I literally just Googled like, how do I get predictable sales? I found this book, Predictable Revenue, and uh, written by Aaron Ross. And it's a great um, introduction to how to think about creating more predictable sales. And the real key to this, there's kind of two keys to it. I'll only be able to cover one piece of it today, and then we can we can come back and talk about the second piece another time. But one piece of it is having a sales pipeline and a sense of all of the leads, having a sense of all the opportunities that you could work with, and then looking at that funnel and figuring out which ones you're actually going to get. The other side of it is, of course, sales methodology and just increasing your conversion rates. But that's a whole other topic we could cover another day in terms of how we went about doing that in my last business and how we think about that at our current company. Um, but in terms of getting better leads, okay, what, what can you do? How do you go about doing that? So that became really important in our last company. So how do we how do we go about doing it? Well, this is what I did in my last business. And it was a pretty big investment, right? We, first of all, had in-house tracking, which meant I had basically our sales team um, just spend half their days taking all the inbound intel we got and entering it into our CRM, right? CRM being a customer relationship management, like a Salesforce or a HubSpot, a place to track all that. So we, we did all that. I also had a coordinator who would directly read trade publications. We would reach out to, I was reaching out to producers I knew directly. So we're trying to fill in the blanks that way. The second thing we would do is subscribe to some of these premium data services. Um, what I found with the premium data services was that they generally focused more on the above the line and didn't have as much good intel on the below the line. So they could tell you what actor was attached to something and you know maybe what was getting financing. But if you wanted to know who's the line producer, who's the UPM, are they going to shoot in LA? Are they going to shoot in Atlanta? When are they going to shoot? That information was usually missing. And then God forbid you actually was trying to get in touch with the production office. They usually never had that info, right? So that led me to this bucket three, which is something that we use, which are these weekly listing services. And again, these would sometimes have some pretty good intel, but getting through a 50-page PDF document every single week to figure out what that one UPM I might know or what's that one phone number that actually works was a real pain. And what all of this added up to was that we spent a lot of money, had a very sophisticated process, and yet we still felt like it was too easy to miss out on opportunities. So that that really frustrated me during the 10 years I built my last company. And so after I, I exited EP in 2022, I set about solving that problem for vendors. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we, we started this business, Proud Pro, with the idea that we're going to create more business <clears throat> with a new Intel platform. Um, the two things I want to highlight that are different about what we're doing are this. One, we've built a tool that serves up all this Intel in a way that makes it much harder to miss opportunities by giving salespeople alerts and notifications and just really easy to kind of spot the projects that are relevant to you. I'll get into that more in the demo and you can kind of see for, your, see for yourself how that might be a fit for the way you guys all work. But then secondly, it's about our data and our data is sourced through an exclusive research method that we've developed internally. And we're tracking lots of specific data that really nobody else tracks like schedules, locations, estimated budgets, who the key buyers are, not just the line producer and UPM, but also oftentimes cinematographer, you know, location coordinators, transport coordinator, a lot of different roles that we're trying to track down. Um, and the net of this is hopefully, you know, delivering more actionable insights for, for vendors. Um, just a little bit more about the research process, just to give you a flavor for it. Um, we kind of have this, this, you know, different chevrons that kind of describe the process. Step one for us is automated monitoring. So again, I come from a technology background, so I try to solve the problem with software where possible. And that's really good at reading a whole lot of information that's publicly available and distilling it down into something that's digestible. So that, that's been good for us. But what set this apart is the team, right? We've got a team of researchers in-house in who come from working in film offices, working in production, working as vendors who are conducting hundreds of calls and emails every single week to verify the information we're getting. And that's really the key. And then we've got this whole research center we've built out that organizes all that to make sure that we're not missing things, automating our follow-ups, things like that. And then lastly, unique relationships. And this is the other thing that really sets us apart. We're building a network of vendors, agencies, guilds, and other individuals who are sharing information with us. So it's really becoming a best of um, all different minds kind of coming together on this. And so the idea is that we're really combining this technology with our expertise to make the most accurate and actionable list possible so that you're not 
you know, looking at bad data or you're not, you know, missing out on opportunities. So that's the, the vision of what we're trying to do. Um, before I jump into the demo, I did tease this, but I wanted to give you guys a little preview of our annual report. So in addition to tracking all of this data at the individual project level, which you'll see in the demo, we also offer a service for vendors to understand industry trends and really conduct their own market research. And we're currently finishing up our 2024 outlook report, which will provide some insight into what happened in 23, what were the activity levels, you know, what was the impact of the disruption of the strikes, and really a forecast going into 2024 of what we think might happen. So let me give you guys a little preview of that next. Okay, so quite the chart going on here. What what are we looking at? So this is a view of the amount of production spend by month that principal photography started. So you can kind of see visualized here, 2022 data, right? Numbers are a lot bigger than 2023. And that's kind of the first sort of trend that you'll notice, um, right? What was going on in 2022? Well, 21 and 22 coming out of COVID and just the content boom that was happening were very, very busy, right? Live action scripted production is what we cover. Very, very busy activity level. When you got into late 22 and early 23, we started to see that the studios came under pressure to cut spend, and we started to observe that in our data. Q1 2023 global production activity was actually down 13% from 2022. So 2023, the pullback was starting to happen. Um, and then, of course, the strike started and threw everything into disarray. And the net of the strikes is that you've got you know over 200 productions by the end of it that are scrambling to figure out who's going to go next, who's going to get started. So obviously a major disruption that we've all experienced over the past 12 months. Next, uh, the great production restart. So what we've done here is we actually calculate all of this by studio, and we've added up that there's about $10 billion in spend that was put on hold, delayed by the strikes. So about $10 billion in spend, right? Disney, Warner's, Comcast, Paramount, the, the key suspects, right, are the main ones that had a lot of money that was delayed. And looking at the status of those delayed productions, and this will be important when we talk about the, what's going on this year, we see that about, you know, a little over half of that volume of activity actually did end up, you know, kind of getting going again by the end of 23. And then looking at Q1, about 2.9 billion or about a third of all of the spend that got put on hold is about 10 billion in total. So about 3 billion of the spend really just ended up getting delayed into Q1. And then there's certainly a big chunk, about 750 million delayed into Q2. And then there's still one and a half billion, 15% of everything that got put on hold that's still unaccounted for, right? Might get delayed further this year. Some of it might just get canceled or terminated because of um, you know the spend just not occurring. So it gives you a little sense of what's happening with the impact of the strikes. And then of course, everyone's really interested to know what's happening in 2024. And what we've found so far is that production activity in the first half of 24 is projected to be up. So we're going to see quite a bit of growth from 2023 um, on a global basis. So if we look at 2023, about $6 billion in spend. 2024, this is looking at Q1 numbers. Q1, we're already seeing you know, about seven and a half billion going into production. So compared to last year, which again was a down year, globally, the numbers are, are up quite a bit. They're actually going to be up about 30% from last year. And if you look at the comparison to 2022, which was that record year where almost six, you know, 6.8 billion went in in Q1, um, 2024 is actually going to be busier globally than 2022's first quarter. So really, really nice indicator that there is a surge in production activity. The caveat to that is two things. One, a lot of this is the backlog, right? A lot of this is that $3 billion from last year that just got pushed into Q1 this year. It really shouldn't be there, um, but it's just getting pushed in. So that's one thing that we're observing. The second thing we're observing as a trend is that this production activity is changing in terms of how much of it is U.S. versus non-U.S. And you can kind of see here um, that uh, internationally, even last year was up, but this year we're seeing quite a bit of international production outside the U.S., whereas the U.S. production, again, it's going to be up from 2023, but the U.S. is expected to be down in Q1. We're looking at down about 5 to 10 percent from Q1 of 2022. So again, even despite that big backlog, this sort of soft restart that many vendors are feeling is kind of visualized here in the numbers where 
you know, we're not seeing Q1 of this year be a straight replacement for what was missing in Q3 of last year. It's better than last year's Q1, but it's not even as good as 2022's Q1. And generally, quarter one is a fairly small quarter in terms of the number of things getting started. So um, I'm going to pause here. Um, and Harry, we can pause for a second to see if anybody has any questions before I get into the demo, because I know I just went fairly quickly. I threw a lot of numbers at everybody, but that's what we're in the business of doing. But if anybody has any questions, happy to take them here and just talk a little bit about the, the trends. And if not, we can keep rolling. Okay. If you have questions, uh, you want to put them in the in the chat or just speak up, uh, unmute yourself. Let me see. Uh, this is Paul Vincent. I just have a quick question, if you don't mind. Could you define what we're talking about in terms of production? What categories are we talking about? You know, typical film production, documentaries. What are, what are we talking about? Commercial video. What are we talking yeah, about? That's a great question. Uh, what Prod Pro covers is live action scripted TV and film production. So English and, and generally English language content when you think about it from a global perspective. So we're looking at all the you know TV shows, feature films, not including documentary, not including commercials, non-scripted, things like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, great clarification. And, and so this is primarily aiding uh, business owners with forecasting, at least for this particular slide. Correct, yeah, Th this, this, this chart we're putting together here and what we do with our annual report is for business owners, as well as we share this with um, most of the heads of physical production at the studios um, are, are really keen on a lot of this data just to understand trends of where production activity is going. And then I'll jump into the live demo and show you um, how Prod Pro services, you know, small businesses or really any type of business who's just looking for leads. Thank you. Cool. Alex in the chat, there's a heart. Are there specific places that are outside of the U.S. that are thriving? Yeah, Canada. I'll just throw that one out there. Canada, Australia has a strong uh, a strong tax credit, so we're seeing uh, Australia get quite a bit of pickup. Um, UK, I think, is um, you know remains strong um, as another market outside the U.S. But in, in terms of the major beneficiaries of where production goes, we do see quite a bit going into Canada. Um, and Australia. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll, I'll jump into the demo here. Cool. Um, there's one, sorry. Oh, yeah, there's, there's another question. I can't see 1.09 billion for California, part of the 3.36 billion for the US, or are they separate? Yes, yes. yeah, that's inclusive. Um, uh, perfect. Okay. Got the questions. All right. Let's jump over to the demo. So, um, this is a view into what you would see, uh, logging into prod pro. And so the first thing that we kind of view is the, the prod alert page up here. And the idea here is that we're kind of giving you visibility into what's new and we break up what's new into three different kind of categories. We've got the early prep things that are in preparation and new to pre-production. We've got new projects, which are projects that have been newly published to our platform. So those are generally development stage. And then an activity feed. So you can kind of see what are the newly updated projects. And a lot of this kind of comes back to that experience I was sort of describing of going through a 50 page PDF once a week and trying to figure out like, what of this do I care about, right? Which of these projects are actually prepping? So this gives you a view into what's actually prepping. So you can kind of see something like Happy Face season one for Paramount is gonna go up in Vancouver. And you can kind of click into it and see, you know, some different articles relevant to the project, you know, the name of the line producer for the project, and then an activity feed that kind of gives you a sense of what's been updated about that particular title. So just really quick ways to kind of visualize what's going on on this on this sort of new early prep list. And I have to say, for most of our clients, this is, you know, they're kind of checking this every day to kind of see what's relevant to them uh, in terms of projects that are getting started. This new projects tab 
is where you'll see more information about projects that are even earlier on, generally in active development or development. And this is a great place to, one, it's kind of like a digest of news information because a lot of this is being announced in the trades and that's what's triggering it to end up on our list here. Um, and one of the things you can do, again, with an eye towards making sure people don't miss opportunities relevant to them, is you can easily kind of bookmark projects. So just as an example, now I'll get notifications whenever Heat 2 progresses, a uh, big Warner Brothers feature that's coming up. And then going back over to that activity feed, I can filter down this activity feed in different ways, look at, okay, what, which projects have we updated some PO information for? That's the production office contact. Which ones have a new location or a new shoot date? Um, let me filter this down by the PO contact just to kind of see what, what new ones we've updated there. You can kind of see some email addresses being added for some of these projects. You know, Firebug season one is a big show, another big one going up in Vancouver. Um, I can kind of see that activity feed, right? Just 23 hours ago, we added the production office email. You know, the crew list for this project is listed here. The line producer, production manager, production coordinator, a lot of good details there. I'll show you more about how you can get individuals contact information in a second. I imagine that might be a question, but let me... Um, let me jump ahead. So that so the idea with the Prod Alert is this is everything that's new. You'll get all sorts of notifications over here. Again, really trying to make this feel less like a, I got to go hunt and search for information and more like Prod Pro is serving me the relevant projects I care about based on what I bookmarked or what I follow, things like that. When I come to the productions page, this is where, um, oh, I just saw a question. Does your data include sub 10 million independent films? Yes, it does. And I'll actually show you how you can kind of filter that down here. So when we come to the productions page, this is where we can search the whole database. So you could search for any titles here, but you can also filter this data down um, really quickly. So you could say, what I really care about, and you could do it by budget category. You say, I want to look at low budget indies. But let me just show as an example, a list I might want to build is what are all the projects prepping right now in New York, all right? I've got an office in New York. We rent equipment there. I want to know everything that's kind of getting started in that market. I can easily just kind of filter this data down, get to New York. And now I've got the list of, let's see, I'll go to the bottom. I don't, I don't have a count here, but you know, about 25 projects, let's say, that are getting started in the New York area. Everything from, you know, TV series, I could filter this down further and just look at the episodics that are getting started. And you just have a really quick, easy way to visualize that. Um, and let me look at Black Rabbit. So this is a season one Netflix show getting started in New York and a little more insight into the intel that we have about the project, right? So being produced by Netflix Studio, it's a drama, it's an episodic, it's in preparation. You know, the estimated dates we're hearing is it's going to get going in April. So still pretty early lead time on this one. Some of the information about the above the line, some of the information about the key below the line, right? The UPMLP, the cinematographer, some generic contacts to reach out to the production companies if that's relevant, a bit more information about our budget estimates are down here, um, as well as articles that are relevant to the project. So all of this information getting aggregated in one place. One of the things I wanted to point out that's fairly unique about the way that we've, um, we've been working is we really try to think of ourselves as an extension of our clients' sales teams, because again, it's something I just wish I had. So for example, I'd be looking at a project like this and maybe I'd say, hey, look, I need to get in touch with the transportation coordinator. I don't see that role here. We have this concept of research request where you can actually submit an inquiry to our research team. Again, our research team's on the phones every week, checking in on these projects, learning about different things. But what's really helpful is to have, if a particular client is really interested to say, you know, who is the transportation coordinator on this, be able to submit that to our team now that'll be an individual uh, request that'll go into a queue where our researchers will try to identify that information and then you'll get an email response when we do. We generally, you know, we commit to saying we'll get this done within seven days. It's typically done within the set, you know, within 24 hours. Um, but for, you know, more difficult tasks, it might take up to a week before we'll get a response to you. Um, but, you know, really easy way to submit and get, you know, kind of concierge research back. Um, question about how many researchers we have on our team. We're about a 10 person team. So we're not an enormous company yet, but in terms of the scale of the research we're doing, again, having worked at both Sync on Set and Entertainment Partners, it's the idea is that we're doing more research and have a greater kind of research org 
not only within the team, but also the, the the sort of additional kind of technology and all these other resources we have that any one company could do on their own, even a very, very large company. Um, so that gives you a sense of, of kind of what's happening there. So that's the production list. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you here, let me just click on another project, go to the night agent. If, for example, you were looking at this project and said, hey, this line producer, Canela, is a great contact for me. I want to click on Canela and see what other projects she's done. I can kind of see, you know, we don't have a super extensive credit history, but you can kind of get a sense of her past projects that we've been tracking. Our data set only goes back to the start of 2021. But for example, you might want to follow this individual because you want to get notifications when ProdPro attaches them to their next project because that person maybe is a key relationship for you. You can go ahead and follow individuals. So it's kind of like bookmarking a project, but now following at the individual level where you're now able to get visibility and get alerts. Again, the idea is to try to make this less a system you need to go hunt inside of and more of a system that's feeding you intel and alerts back to you to say, here's where this project is going that you cared about. Here's um, you know a UPM that you 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 follow um, you know just got attached to a new project. Trying to make that you know again more actionable, more timely for your your sales process. Again, trying to solve those challenges that we had in our our last business. Um, another thing you can do then if you're like, okay, this is great, love to follow people. How do I build a list of all the line producers and UPMs that I care about? You can come in here to this crew list. And it's this dynamic, um, again, another way to dynamically cut through the data to figure out, okay, who are all the line producers, UPMs that I'm going to say work on high budget episodics and maybe, uh, let's see, uh, are working, what do I care about? I'm going to pick a Georgia, where's Georgia? You know, really, really way, a really easy way to get that, you know, kind of tight list of people who generally work on, you know, these types of big budget projects in uh, in the Georgia area. And you can kind of see here, it filters on Atlanta, Savannah. These are all some of the people that we're, we're tracking, you know, some people on projects that are currently going, some people on projects that uh, are currently prepping, and just really easy ways to kind of filter down that data here as well. Um, so that's the crew list. If you're uh, a business that sells at the company level, you work with the studios and you have relationships at the studio level or you know just a, another sales channel for you, you might be interested to come in here and say, I want to see all this information organized by production company. I'd like to see at Netflix, you know, we have a good relationship with the head of physical production there. We'd like to come in here and understand what's in their development slate. So next time we talk to them, you know, we can bring up a couple of projects that seem to be, you know, on the short list of things that are going to come up later this year. So really easy way to kind of filter down that list. We also list a lot of the contacts at the studio level. So if you're looking for, you know, contact information for production, physical production, finance, that's an easy way to do that as well. Um, lastly, I wanted to show you opportunities. So the idea with opportunities is for businesses that have um, the need to track deals, um, you know, we... At my last company, use Salesforce and customize Salesforce. For those that don't know, it's a customer relationship management system, HubSpot, Sugar Serum. There's a bunch of ones out there. Salesforce, very expensive, very customizable, very, very good for what it does. And we found that um, one of the things that was tricky, though, is that in order to kind of keep our lead pipeline up to date in Salesforce, it just required a lot of double entry because we were getting all the info from all these different sources and then we're entering it all in Salesforce. One of the things that we wanted to do in ProdPro was make it really easy to actually track opportunities in ProdPro so that your lead pipeline can be a little cleaner in terms of what you're tracking. So what, what does that look like? Well, we've got this little target icon here. Anywhere you see a project, you'll see the little target icon. And I was thinking about Heat 2 earlier. So actually for Heat 2, I'm going to create a, 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 an opportunity. And so an opportunity is just a simple way, lightweight way to track a deal. So I'm going to say I got a rental you know, package opportunity. I can spell it. Um, Rental package, what is my next step, right? I've got to call the UPM, my follow-up date, my deal amount, close date, what my sales stage is. Just a really easy, lightweight way to track your sales pipeline. Maybe it's at a proposal stage. I can save that opportunity. And then when I go to the opportunity section, again, just a lightweight tool built into the platform to allow you to keep track of um, what you have in your sales pipeline. So I'll just cut over to that really quickly. We're actually making a lot of opportunity, a lot of uh, improvements to this now to further develop it. Um, but you can kind of see I've got my opportunities. 
You can visualize all of the opportunities here. If I wanted to look at, you know, all of my opportunities that I've got in a proposal stage, I can kind of see all my different proposals. So just an easy way to kind of track the sales, track the deal pipeline. And what's nice about doing that in a tool like this is that these production statuses are being updated in real time by our research team as the projects advance versus copying everything into your own Salesforce or your own CRM and then, you know, Excel, whatever, and then having, you know, having to constantly update those dates or update the status of things. It just makes it a little easier to keep up with. Um, you can also store your contacts in here. So if you're interested in um, actually tracking individual contact information, all of the information in the opportunity section is completely private to your business. So all of this is, is private to you, whereas obviously the rest of the platform, you're looking at information that's sort of tracked across our network. Um, but that's the concept of the opportunities. And then lastly, reports, where we just make it really easy to pull out a list. So if you want to pull out a list of projects that are you know, in preparation, pre-production, you can export that to Excel, really clean, standard exports. You can also pull out these PDF reports if you prefer to print it out and kind of you know, visually kind of tick it off. Um, you know, as if it's like one of those old weekly publications, we make that easy to do as well, but really easy ways to kind of get those, those reports out, um, from here as well. And that's everything that we've got in the pipeline product. As I mentioned earlier with the market research we're doing, we also have this entire analytics tool, which is a separate tool that is really designed for larger companies that are using it, um, that, that have more of that forecasting and need more of that visibility. Um, but just to give you the little um, preview of what that tool actually looks like, how we're building out that annual report, you can kind of see what that tool looks like. So it's actually an interactive version of that annual report where you could come in and really just kind of cut the data in whatever way you might find interesting. So you might say, hey, this is really cool, but my business only operates in the U.S. How do I filter down and see what the activity level is in the U.S. right now? So just a really easy way to kind of cut the data, pivot things down, um, and 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 you can also build out your own reports up here as well. So it's not just this dashboard, but it's actually totally customizable off our data set. Um, but with that, I will um, pause for a moment and answer any other questions that maybe came up. I know I tend to go fairly quickly through this because I know this thing really well, but uh, I might have um, I might have breezed through something a little too quickly. So if anybody has any questions, please let me know. Uh, can you go back to the opportunities section? Yeah, please. I had to take calls, honestly, so <laughs> I just wanted to get my eyes on it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is like a CRM that yes. enables yeah. the okay the rental agent to organize the data and maximize their opportunities. Yep. Yeah. You Hence can... the opportunity list. That's the idea. That's the All right. idea. Okay. And then I, I saw a question about, have you uh, had feedback from the major studios? Um, it, it was the question more about the production studios or the production facilities, like studio facilities? I got a follow up that was a yes. I'm thinking that means production studios. I mean, the feedback from the the studios has been, you know, really positive in terms of, um, you know, on the on, for the content producers who are producing all of this, you know, all of these projects, um, you know, they're really interested in a lot of the analytics that we're doing. So they they love the annual reports that we put together and some of the quarterly things that we've been sharing with them. Um, and I think for them too, the idea of being able to ensure that their projects are being listed in a place where they'll get you know, uh, more competitive bids, you know, better talent for their projects, better resources for their projects is certainly attractive. I mean, there is an element that this business is very much a, um, you know, a don't call me, I'll call you sort of model in a lot of ways when it comes to how, how production companies generally work with vendors. Um, but we're finding that the way that we're doing this, you know, creating a closed network that you know is designed just for the professional vendors within the ecosystem has worked out really well. So it's been a, a good symbiotic relationship so far. Um, and then the other question was, um, is the product currently available? Can you comment on how you are monetizing your data? Yeah, 
Um, ProdPro is certainly available today. So ProdPro is being used by many of the leading um, grip and lighting, studio facilities, businesses um, already. You know, a couple of clients would be like the MBS Group, uh, Airy Rental, um, as well as many of the leading VFX and post-production companies. So this is certainly in the market today. In terms of our pricing, it really depends on size of business. Given that we're licensing this data um, and it's a data service, we don't, uh, the way that we price is actually just sort of based on business size. So if you're interested in, in kind of getting a sense of the pricing, you can follow up with me afterwards and we can certainly talk about, you know, what your business looks like, how large it is, how many salespeople you have, whether it's a small company or a large company. And then we kind of come up with a price that makes sense based on the size of business. I had a question for you, Alex. Yeah. Um, I'm an insurance broker, but you know we, we target rental houses and, and studio rental facilities, amongst other things. And I was talking with Zoom Info this morning, coincidentally. Yeah. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, very similar, if not the same, but it's niche and, and developed and tailored specifically for uh, the industry, a specific industry. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that Zoom Info and, you know, Rocket Reach, and there's a couple others out there that are good kind of contact databases for, mm -hmm. for you know, sort of businesses. The challenge with production, and I would say they probably, you know, might even be good for some of the studio contacts. The challenge with productions on a project basis is that they're not going concerns, right? That say they spin up for six months and then they wind down and they spend a few hundred million dollars potentially in the process. Um, and so in that dynamic, it's like what we're listing here, all these people, these are all freelancers, right? And all these crew people, they're all freelancers. So, you know, Zoom Info could be a good resource if you were selling to, um, you know, Amazon warehouses and you know who kind of works at the warehouse year after year, that kind of thing. But if you want to know who's working on an Amazon Studios production, they're probably not going to have that contact information, even the concept of that project. I mean, again, could be good absolutely for not. Yeah, no. not projects. No, I, I see the value here. No, I was just curious. I'll yeah. let everyone else uh, take the mic. Yeah. Since, uh, since I'm not, you know, I'm not a customer here, but this is something I'll, I'd like to. I wanted to understand so I can uh, refer and suggest the product if there's a need. So thank you for your time. Yeah, perfect. No, I appreciate it. And I saw, I think there was another comment, just can we set up a one-on-one a, a -on -one meeting with another, with a with a company? Absolutely happy to. My email is just alex at prodpro.com. So I'm easy to reach. Um, and then Harry did share with me the, uh, the contact list for the meeting. So I'll send a follow-up email to everybody as well, just with my contact. So you have it. Um, and yeah, absolutely happy to be in touch. We got to give everybody a chance to ask any final questions. Great. Well, if if that is, if there are no other questions, um, yeah. Thank you very much. This is a really informative session and really interesting to see what you've put together and how uh, uh, how you've made it so uh, actionable uh, for, for our members. Um, there is a question. Nick is asking, uh, are there other industries that you have? Yeah, I thought about including. Um, it's a good question. I mean, we're, we're really focused on sort of entertainment and TV and film. Um, you know, the, I would say that we'd like to get into the areas outside of just scripted. Um, the challenge with, and we do track some non-scripted information. Um, so if you are interested in that, there is some of that that we are tracking in our database. The challenge we find is that scripted production generally has pretty similar qualities to it in terms of quite a bit of spend that is, you know, at least has a little bit of lead time. When you get into unscripted, it becomes a lot more um, squishy in terms of, you know, the the lead time on projects and what types of projects to include and all of that. So it's been a little trickier. But I think over time, just to give you guys a sense of like, where are we going with this? There's kind of two avenues. One is we're looking forward to a future where we start to invite in uh, crew looking for work. 
So today, this is exclusively available to vendors who are looking to service production, but in the future, will be available to freelance crew looking for jobs. So that's one big category we plan on expanding into. And then the other ideas um, is that for um, for the unscripted space and just in general, we plan on creating a little bit more of a marketplace where as a vendor, not only can you use this to identify projects to reach out to, but you can start to use it to actually maybe even bid on projects. And on the content producer side, they not only can use it to, you know, be a source for them to, you know, be uh, reached out to, but they could also use it as a source to kind of solicit bids from vendors. Um, and I think that that I don't see being super effective in the world of scripted where it's like, well, I got a $200 million movie and I'm going to go do a blind bid across a bunch of different vendors. They want to work with who they trust can get that $200 million job done. But when you get into commercial production where it's a lot more transactional, I think it's going to be a lot easier on everyone if uh, it was a little bit more of a marketplace model. So that that's the one area where we, we could see it becoming, um, yeah, getting into more of the non-scripted commercial documentary uh, is where they're using it more of a market, more as a marketplace. I saw, yes, someone like my my squishy. Yes, that's that's how I describe it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> scripted is uh, also squishy, but at least there's a little more meat on the bone. Uh, unscripted, it's tricky. Um, my heart goes out to anyone who that's their core market. It's uh, that's a trickier one. Um, okay. Anything else? Harry, thank you so much for inviting me, and thank you all for the time. It's really a pleasure. I look forward to uh, following up and sending some info to you all to hopefully uh, continue to be a resource for PERG and, and your members. That's great. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, everybody, for coming.